Have you seen Linus's seven gamers, one PC project or his more recent six editors, one PC project? Well, I have because I helped sort of work on it a little bit. But it's actually a fun, interesting project. Linus is a cool guy, you know, all that kind of stuff. The idea is just to see what happens when you have a computer that's shared by six or seven people using virtual machines. So now it might seem like these projects are really ghetto and wildly impractical, but in reality, you've got to give props to Linus and his team because it's such a cool project. It is really pretty awesome. So even AMD is getting in on this kind of thing. They recently set up a demo system with Threadripper and four Vega GPUs feeding four 1080p streams to a single 4K monitor. To do that, they use a piece of software called Looking Glass and Level 1 has been involved with, level, with uh, Looking Glass since the beginning. So this is all kind of awesome. I mean, Looking Glass, you know, it's golden eye, it's golden eye, that's pretty cool. So this kind of thing actually exists in business and it's done in a non-ghetto kind of way. The hardware is essentially the same, but the software, the software is what's different. And I've got a soft spot in my heart for videos of the genre, so many somethings, one something else. Like, so many somethings, one something else. Now, in business settings, the technology is generally called VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. You see VDI commonly used uh, in commercial settings, so like banks offices, especially like architectural and engineering firms, and government sector type applications as well. The VDI is really popular there. Now for banks, regular office workers, and some government workers, usually VDI is about control. It's often easier to manage things if the important data never really leaves the closet, the server closet, and you bring the workers to the data with a remote connection because then the data is not really stored on their machine it's not as easily lost or stolen and perhaps it's easier to audit installed software and manage changes on a vast army of computers you know you've got just a thin client to worry about so it's really about security and control now it gets interesting in architecture and engineering firms see they uh you know they've got cad and simulation software and a lot of really high-end software and the graphics horsepower is just as important as the uh, CPU horsepower. It's kind of like a gamer type workload. Now the intellectual property for those companies is highly valuable. Somebody with a USB stick, you know, and plans to say a skyscraper, they might have hundreds of millions of dollars of product on a USB stick from all the stuff that went into that. Maintaining those CAD programs is really important and the security around that because somebody could just walk out with that. And if all that data is on a local PC, it's a lot harder to control. The physical security is not really that great there. It makes it really easy for competitors to steal information from your computers if there's not really a lot of control over that kind of thing in the first place. Uh, it can also be a cost saving measure. So uh, it, it's beneficial because maybe not everybody you know, is using their workstation with their $5,000 graphics card at once. Certainly in Linus's build, you know, he's got a compelling shot at a reasonable performance with six editors on one PC because he's not spending, you know, he's only spending $20,000 on CPUs instead of, you know, six times $10,000 on CPUs for $10,000, you know, because each editor would need to see their own $10,000 CPU or whatever. I mean, is it reasonable for every editor to get their own $10,000 CPU? I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, especially not when Premiere doesn't even really use all that horsepower anyway. I've done the videos. I know that. So that brings me to what I want to show you. What I want to do on this sort of project and this, on this side of things, like, can you even game in VDI? And what's the performance of like Premiere in VDI in like an enterprise or commercial setting? Like if we did it with VDI. So what I've been working on and what I'm going to be working on over the next few weeks uh, is this. We're gonna need a test system. This is the Quad Stellar from Deep Cool. It's quad damage. I don't, I don't know. Now, I started with a 2990 in this system, but I've since upgraded that to an Epic 7551 because it runs cooler. And behind me, I've got 512 gigabytes of memory, a rack mount, two processor Epic server, and Threadripper CPUs for days. I'm just not really sure what the final hardware is gonna be. Now, uh, it's going to be something enterprisey, something that your, you know, your CTO wouldn't think twice about installing in a rack, so probably not the, the quad seller. But the quad seller is cool to experiment with. So I'd say ultimately, this project, the software end of it, is going to go in a two processor rack mount server, or two, we could run a cluster, hell I could run a cluster of 2990s. Right now in here, we've got that Epic 7551 on the Gigabyte MZ01 CEO and tons of PCIe Optane storage. 
It's only got 64 gigs of RAM right now, but that's enough. That's enough for experimenting. And this is only the beginning. Now up here in this part of the quad stellar are the real stars of our show. It's two Tesla V100s. Thanks. He helped me procure those for a, uh, a nominal cost, a song, if you will. Normally, those cards are $10,000 US each, and they're sanctioned for this kind of use, this kind of virtualization VDI type workload. The Tesla V100s are essentially the same as an NVIDIA Titan V and the Quadro GV100. That's 21.1 billion transistors, 5120 CUDA cores, 30 teraflops of floating point 16, 15 teraflops of floating point 32, and they've got three NVENC coprocessors, so that's for encoding and all this kind of stuff. They can handle many, many low latency 4K60 encode jobs at once. And based on the same Volta architecture, there's the Titan V and the Quadro GV100. Now the Titan V has just 12 gigs of HBM2, but the Quadro and the Tesla V100 have, you know, they're available with up to the full 32 gigs. Otherwise, the V100 hardware in here is pretty much the same as those Titan Vs or the GV100. Now the Titan V is only three grand, so compared to 10 grand, that's a steal. Now mostly the price differences are down to software, but the prices are what they are because that's what the market is willing to bear. Now back to our V100s. That silicon is so powerful that you could run a grid of up to 32 virtual GPUs on a single card. And I've got two of them in here in the top. But for 4K and for fast 4K, I can probably only run about four to eight seats per card. So I'm thinking eight power users uh, in this system at 4K. I wanna see how far we can push it though. Maybe we can get a little bit more than that. Now I'm gonna set this up using VMware and NVIDIA's grid software because well, in, VMware has invested the most engineering resources into this. They've literally been doing projects like this, like 10 engineers, one server for years. And so it makes sense that you would start there. They've also got their extremely low latency horizon client, and we can use these to stream over the network at basically real time at up to 60 FPS. So it's gonna be very, very low latency. And this, this kind of technology is probably also gonna be the same kind of thing that you see if you do, uh, cloud gaming ever takes off. Now the magic of VMware means that I could run a cluster. I don't have to be limited to one PC. I could have two 2990 CPUs and do a four-way epic config or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Even with multiple servers, the software side of things will present to the end user, the Horizon client, as if it's just one system. So if one if one physical server goes down, the other physical server will handle it, you know everything. So 10 engineers, one cluster, or 20 engineers, one cluster. That's what VMware's been doing for years. 500 office drones, one cluster. Yeah, that's what VMware and VDI is all about. Now, c coming back to reality, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna shape up, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. And I wanted to play with uh, this kind of stuff. And I wanna see if I can get Skyrim to run on a Raspberry Pi through VDI. It's epic hardware and epic hardware. And uh, this is how things are sort of done on the enterprise side of things. But this is only the beginning, and this is only the first video. So if you want, you know, if you're a VMware admin or you've got a really particularly impressive VDI setup or you've done this before, join us in the forums at Level One Techs. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. You're gonna have to wait till next time to see the cool stuff. I'll see you there.